Good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Happy Haynes, and I'm so proud to serve as the executive director of Denver Parks and Recreation, and so many of my colleagues uh, here with me today um, for a wonderful, uh, really a celebration and uh, announcement about uh, a very important initiative. I, I want to start out by saying thank you to Denver voters who in November uh, voted to invest in our parks and recreation system. The new park tax will generate approximately 37 million additional dollars a year for our park system in Denver. That deserves an applause. <laughs> this crowd up. Gonna have John lead us in some calisthenics to warm this, this crowd up. Over the last several weeks, we've been in many meetings across the city and we've heard back from our community uh, about what they wanted in this park system and how they wanted those investments in our parks. And so we have created a plan that will help us to maintain our legacy and extend the legacy of the, the wonderful park system that we have here in Denver. Our plan is focused on acquiring new land to expand our park system, addressing deferred maintenance, taking better care of what we already have, initiating sustainable projects that will make our park system more resilient, building signature parks that will activate our parks and bring people to them, planning for the expansion of our systems through developing master plans all across the city and system-wide plans with feedback from our community. It is important to note that partnership with our community in everything that we do. And finally, to expand our outdoor recreation offerings. Uh, when I first took this job almost four years ago, uh, my parting shot was everybody go outdoors and play. Uh, and that's exactly what we want to make happen with our young people, with our uh, older active adults, and with everyone in Denver to recognize the value of their own health and the beauty of our city by getting outdoors and enjoying our wonderful park system. Before I turn it over to the mayor, who with Councilman Clark helped to champion uh, two -A, the 2A measure in November. I want to acknowledge a lot of the partners with, without whom we would not be here today. Um, so many, the Trust for Public Land, the, uh, the uh, Mountain Parks Foundation, um, the Civic Center Conservancy is here today, uh, the Greenway Foundation, you'll hear a little bit more about some of these organization. We have members of our Parks and Rec Advisory Board here who have been with us every step of the way and many of our uh, city colleagues, real estate, finance team is here. I mean so many people have helped make this a reality and finally uh, you'll hear from Councilman Clark who will speak on behalf of the City Council but whose leadership, the City Council leadership along with the Mayor made this a reality. The park people is here. Come up here, Kim. Uh, don't make me call names. And so I want to turn it over now to Mayor Michael B. Hancock, who has been such a champion of our park system and our department, and particularly for young people and our active older adults. He's always looking for ways for our department and our system to serve our residents better and uh, he uh, last summer I think it is mayor you uh, reached out to the trust for public land and asked for some help in exploring ways that we could expand our financial options for our park system and who knew that just a few short months later the voters of this city would pass a measure 2a so without further ado our great champion mayor Michael B Hancock Thanks, Abby. Thanks, Happy Haynes. I want to thank uh, Denver Parks and Recreation, and of course our finance and city attorney's uh, offices. 
for coming up with such a robust and, and thoughtful strategy that we're about to share publicly. First of all, to my team who is going to encourage me to take my hat off, the answer is no, <laughs> it is too cold. First of all, let's celebrate again our parks team led by the executive director, Happy Haynes, who we just heard from. Tremendous leader, tremendous leadership. Scott Gilmore, John Martinez, Fred Wise, Sheila Urban, Gordon Robinson, Kathy Levique, uh, Michael Bouchard, Doug Woods, Bill Duanis, and Yolanda Casada. Thank you all and the entire parks team that maintain our parks and our tremendous amenities and assets. To our finance team, our chief financial officer, the one and only, uh, as he often tells me, Brendan Hanlon, Laura Perry, that was a joke, y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Laura Perry, Jeff Steinberg, and Lisa Lumley. And of course, to the city attorney's office, led by Kristen Bronson, but of course, city attorney who worked on this opportunity, Jason Moore. Let's give it up to all of our public employees who made a difference. You know, at the end of the day, our ultimate vision is to build a city that is best for eight-year-old to an 88-year-old. And our parks define our city, they define our neighborhoods, and they define the type of place we want to be today as well as in the future. When we kicked off our community process for Comprehensive Plan 2040, three years ago, the game plan for a healthy city was a key part of that conversation because parks are an essential city infrastructure and that means more parks in more neighborhoods. We laid out the goal that every Denver resident in every neighborhood should live within a 10 minute walk of a park, every resident. And Councilman Jolyn Clark stepped up and said, here's how we can get the funding to make that goal possible. He championed the ballot measure and I couldn't have been prouder to join him in supporting it. So today we also get a chance to say once again to Councilman Clark, Thank you very much for your leadership and your vision. And the people of Denver backed up that goal, as someone just reminded us. They joined us in community meetings and then they backed it up last November on the funding question to make it happen with an overwhelming support, 61% supporting Measure 2A. The people of Denver said yes to more parks in more neighborhoods and we're ready to deliver. In fact, we're already delivering the first park acquisition is making it its way through City Council right now. So we ask Council to join us in moving forward with our first step along this journey. So here's what this means for our residents and neighborhoods. Acquiring new parkland, tack tackling uh, deferred maintenance so all of our parks can, can uh, stay great, and bringing park amenities to all corners of the city using the lens of equity. The priority for the first years will be acquiring land and creating parks, especially in neighborhoods that don't have equitable access to city quality parks, to close a gap on a 10 minute walk for every resident. Like a pocket park that we're doing in Westwood at Kentucky and Irving, an area of town that lacks parks, uh, park amenities right now. And we're going to invest over $1.5 million in the first two years to growing our tree canopy in downtown Denver, helping to counter the heat island effect. And we're going to complete the Sand Creek Regional uh, Trail, an important build out of our trail system. And we're going to invest in fire mitigation in our mountain parks to keep our forests healthy. Yes, we're going to celebrate and continue to honor our forefathers who helped us to acquire 14,400 acres of land in our mountain parks. And using the, qui the, qui the criteria of, of equity, we're going to be replacing playgrounds, picnic tables, sidewalks, and courts across our system. So thanks to our community organizations, as Happy pointed out, who rallied behind this measure. Again, the Trust for Public Land, who helped us to see our way through the important requirements to keeping the city great. Greenway Foundation, of course, Jeff, we appreciate you for being here. GOCO, Civic Center Conservancy, and the Parks people. And once again, we thank the people of Denver, not only for the vote in November, but attending the five community meetings that we just conducted to help us create the vision on how we best implement the strategy going forward. And with that, it is my pleasure to bring up the councilman who had the vision and really helped lift the load in carrying this initiative forward. Let's give it up for City Council President, Councilman Jolyn Clark. Uh, today's a pretty exciting day. Um, 
I, I want to echo the thanks uh, that everybody's already said to all these folks standing behind me who made this happen, to the voters of Denver, to all the staff. We'll give a special shout out to, uh oh, broke the microphone, to uh, Zach Rothmeyer standing up there who helped actually write the bill that went in front of voters. Um, you know, the easy part was identifying that there was a problem with our parks and coming up with that solution to put in front of voters. The easy part for voters was saying, we absolutely want to continue and do our part to maintain the legacy of being a city in a park that was set by the founders of Denver. The hard part is the work that's been done to lead up today, today to announce this five-year plan, is how do we take the investment, the gift that the voters gave uh, the gave this city and how does that get equitably distributed throughout the city? How do we solve the 10 minute walk problem for so many residents who can't safely get to a park in their community? And, and how do we make sure that we don't now have 2A parks and before 2A parks? How do we make sure that we invest in the parks that we already have, in the parks that are in our communities that don't have the amenities and don't, aren't safe for people to use? And this plan represents that. And, and as the mayor mentioned, just, la just last week we had in committee the first acquisition coming through city council. There is a community that is going to have a park that has never had a park that they can safely walk to. Uh, and that's because of 2A. That's thanks to voters and every single park. So if, if you live in that community, this money is for you. This is about you. And if you don't live in that community and you have a park that needs some work, that this money is coming there too. And that plan that is set forward, I think is very visionary in terms of how do we accomplish all of those things? How do we deliver a world-class park for each and every resident and citizen of our city and make sure that we reclaim our spot on the top of that list when it comes to park score? Instead of dropping, we're going back up so we're the number one city in the world when it comes to parks. So thank you to everybody for being here and for everything you've done to get us to today. Thank you so much. Councilman Clark, for your inspiration. Uh, now I would like to turn it over to someone whose uh, energy and excitement is just palpable. Uh, Florence Navarro is a member of our parks. This is for you, Florence. <laughs> Florence Navarro is a member of our Parks and Rec Recreation Advisory Board and uh, n not only that, but served as the co-chair, along with Daryl Watson, who's here with us, yeah, raise your hand, uh, as, the, as the game plan task force, and really led the game plan, which is going to um, provide the inspiration and the guidance to us about how to implement this plan. And so I want to turn it over to Florence to say a few words. All right, good Thank you, Happy. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for the invitation to be here this morning um, to kick off this uh, talk about the five-year plan for parks and the open space sales tax is released. You know, I'm really excited about this. Not only just excited, but as we talked about the other night, ecstatic about the future because of the Measure 2A, which is intricately supported by the game plan. <laughs> A, a plan recently completed after a three-year developmental process. As a tenured member of Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, I have had numerous discussions regarding a dedicated funding source for Parks and Recreation along with staff, along with Joel and Councilman Joel Clark, when he was on the Parks and Rec Advisory Board. So we've, these discussions have been going on for a long time now, something we've needed as all of you know, we just needed this. The timing of having completed the game plan for a healthy city and now being able to begin implementation because of Measure 2A is incredible and something that could not have been orchestrated any better as they are both moving forward at this time. Rec you know, it was really ironic that within the game plan is a recommendation for a dedicated funding source. What a better way to start that and say, hey, let's check this one. This is huge. It's a big, it's major. Also, just to know a little bit more about the game plan and 2A, 
Both have the voices of Denver residents helping to shape the game plan and 2A. Process to develop the game plan included extensive outreach in the collection of input and comments that ultimately led to the game plan as we know it today. That included stake force, task force meetings, online surveys, um, mail-in surveys, public forums, staff focus groups and workshops. We've had some extensive involvement from the community and our partners in this effort. As co-chair of task force for the game plan, those involved and participated had deliberate discussions on the role of our city's park and recreation system and what they can be and mean to the health of all of our Denver residents. Discussions also to develop the vision and guiding principles were also deliberate and very robust. Another key factor that Councilman Clark mentioned and Happy mentioned in the mayor regarding equity. You know, to have equity in all the system throughout Denver. This was naturally integrated throughout the game plan. Something we didn't have to just keep reminding ourselves of, did we make sure this is in it? No, this just naturally evolved. That's what makes this game plan even more powerful than the previous game plan. I am very much looking forward to discussing this plan with fellow Park and Recreation Advisory Board members and hearing from the public as the plan for measure 2A begins to go forward in the process. Again, I do want to thank all of the support this has received from the mayor, the director, Happy, thank you so much, and all city council, our task force members, many of which are here today, and Parks and Rec Advisory Board. Thank you all for coming and thank you so much. Any, any questions from the members of the media? Fantastic. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> you get three seconds.